Before we use a meter, we have to test it. And there's two things that we need to do. Number one, see down here, it says category three, 600 volts. Only these meters are allowed to go inside these boilers for repair. The next thing, we have to test the meter itself. And we do that by simply going over to ohms. And you can see OL, open line, and then an M, ohm. So that's millions of ohms. And it's in auto ranging mode. Which stage is going to be, I'm going to make an X here on these probes. And within two seconds, that OL has to go to zeros, full stop, and then a number. That number has to change within 10 seconds. We do know that some flukes don't do this and some do. We don't understand why because of us, the rep, and um, he doesn't know either. Nobody knows. Some models do, some models don't. All of these have to. So let's do the first test then. We're going to make an X and press hard. And there we are, two seconds and it's refreshing. Let go, two seconds and it's got back to OL. That's a perfect multimeter ready for use. Before we can begin fault finding and seeing what's wrong with the boiler, we need to make sure that it's off and dead and no voltage is going through. And that's called a four part electrical test. And they consist of number one is earth continuity. And that means that that big fat green wire coming into the house continues all the way to this screw because that's where we pick it up to the casing. The second test is going to be short circuit. The third one is resistance to earth. And the final one is polarity. And that's when we switch the boiler on, but no demand to see whether the 230 volts or more is actually on the brown live. The neutral is zero. And obviously the earth is going to be zero. So I'll do each chapter separately. So let's go back to the beginning. I've removed the fuse and here we are, I've checked it. You must do this every single time you go into the house because we are riddled with boilers and they have 13 amp fuses which blow up PCBs. So you don't want to be uh, liable for that. The next thing is we need to check whether that screw is actually earthed. And the way we do that is simply always the black lead will go to the casing and the red lead will go to the screw and as you can see immediately I've got zeros and it's being refreshed which means that the earth is continuing with no resistance all the way from that consumer unit. We also move the red lead onto the PCB earth where it comes in on the flex and then you also go where the yellow and greens meet on the boiler casing so there's three places we do it and that's before you do anything else to make sure that we've got a good earth and now we can continue to the next stage the short circuit test is a very simple but very important test and what we're looking at is the resistance between that live terminal and the neutral terminal coming in so it's measuring parts of the boiler we need to turn the multimeter onto ohms. It's quite safe because as you can see the padlock's there. Test the meter. Yes, that's working fine. And as always, we have to put the black lead in first. And then finally the live to there. And we'll give it a moment or two to calibrate itself. And it's now reading 53 ohms. Now normally, as in the book that we have here, uh, page 14, which is our short circuit test, we're asking for 100 ohms or higher. But because there are different ways of plugging in the different components onto a PCB, it could go as low as 20 ohms. So if you do read between that live and neutral, for example, 60 ohms, in theory, that would be a 4 amp fuse. If you have that less than 100 ohms, please phone the factory before you do anything else and ask for guidance. Say, I'm doing a short circuit test, I've got 53 ohms, is that okay? Or 
is something wrong and they may say oh, right that is wrong it should be a lot higher than that therefore you need a new PCB and you would be wise to replace maybe a fan or a pump or another component before you do that because that could be damaged with the new PCB so don't use a reconditioned one it has to be the latest version from the factory for the model of the boiler that you're working on so that covers a short circuit test so this is an example on a valent boiler and as you can see the boiler is unplugged and the multimeter is in the off position so we do exactly the same as always put it onto ohms do the test 21 22 resetting so now as always the black lead has to go on neutral so we'll put it here on n put this one on l for live and it'll calibrate itself and it's giving us a number of 14 m so that's 14 million ohms which is way way higher than the 100 that we need and that's a pass so the board is switched on as before so nothing changes but that's how we do it on a valent boiler and all the other boilers are exactly the same way so that concludes our short circuit test resistance to earth is a test that we have to do it's the third and final one in ohms and we're measuring whether the integrity of the live and earth and neutral and earth has been broken and what we have to see is ol over a million ohms if we see numbers then that component that we're measuring is now failing quite fast and we can do that on any component here that has live neutral and earth for example the pump but we can also do this test on a washing machine a kettle a microwave anything that has live neutral and earth we can do this resistance to earth test so let me show you how it's done put it into ohms press the two terminals together and that's fine and the first thing we always do of course is to put the black lead onto the earth casing and we measure the live first and we want to see ol and we've got ol then we want to test the neutral side and we see ol and if we went to the earth connection you can see here it's jumped straight to zero because it's earth to earth in two seconds uh, proves that it's continuing so that's how we do it on a Worcester boiler and that's a pass on the valent boiler we do the same way but our earth connection is here on the bottom corner don't use the white casing because that's insulation must be where the yellow and greens meet and as before we'll put this first on the live terminal and we see ol put it on the neutral terminal ol put it on the earth terminal and immediately it shows us continuity and that's how we do it on a valent boiler right just to show you the close-up version so we put the black lead into neutral the red lead into live and you can see here it's gone to 244 243 and then we let go then the next stage is we put the black lead onto the earth connection and we go into the live terminal and we get that 243 244 because it will move because electricity does then we put it into the neutral and as you can see here it's 0 0.027 so that proves that the wiring and the polarity in this house going to this boiler is perfect and that's how it has to be so here's an example of a non-condensing boiler still doing the same three tests so we'll put the multimeter into ohms get the probes short it out and that's a pass so the first stage is going to be earth continuity so black lead goes to the casing 
red lead goes to the earth connection and we can see we've got zeros which means the earth is continuing with no resistance the second test is going to be our short circuit so again black lead will go to neutral red lead will go to live and then we'll just wait a few seconds for the multimeter to calibrate itself and it's reading 280 ohms and you can see the one and the two is being refreshed so that's a pass the next stage is going to be our resistance to earth so we go back to the casing and then we go back here to the live terminal and we expect to see ol but we don't, we're seeing 280. So alarm bells are ringing, something is wrong. So we'll put this into the neutral setting and there we can see zeros. So that means this is a complete failure because a neutral wire is touching an earth wire. So if I was to plug this in and switch it on, the board would definitely blow up and maybe take another component with it. So this is a really good example of the four part electrical test and it's failed on the third part. The final part is called polarity and that's where we can plug the boiler in but the boiler switch is in the off position because we don't want it firing up while we're testing. So we just want to know how much electricity we've got and where is it. So first of all we'll use our contact list and that tells us yes we've got some sort of electricity going in so we need to move this to AC I'll do some close-ups black lead goes to neutral red lead goes to live and you can see here we've got 244 volts and that's fine but I don't know which one of the two wires are carrying the voltage and the way we do that is we put the black lead on earth and we leave it there not on the casing here on the earth where the yellow and greens meet and then we go into the brown wire and here you can see it's 244 and that's fine now we have to test the blue neutral so we put it into the neutral and we can see here zero and it should be zero many installers are mistaken they they've been told and it's on youtube's everywhere that you can have five volts on the blue and that's problem free that's completely wrong the householder needs to find a part p electrician to bring fat five volts or whatever volts there are to zero you are not allowed to recommend anybody because that makes you liable jointly with the electrician who has to do this it's their fault it's badly wired house nothing to do with the heating nothing to do with the boiler but the upshot is if we have two three four or more volts on the blue one main fault will be this zone valve or any diverter valve it doesn't matter who makes it it will go halfway and stop and you'll think ah i'm brilliant i've all i've got to do is change that little synchron motor and i fix this you've got no chance because that's not the fault the fault is voltage on the blue the other big effect will be the pump if this pump doesn't go to full speed in in a millisecond and it has to trip a sensor or a switch whatever they use and if it doesn't do that in that millisecond you get an error code saying you've got no water or change the pump or even worse change the pcb which is why we have this four-part electrical test so i hope you've uh, enjoyed it and uh, subscribe to our channel and thanks for watching and take care